Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, what a day in the market. And we had a whole boatload of stuff come out this morning, which drove the market red immediately, which we're going to get into and stuff. But I do want to say at the end of this, after all the finance stuff and everything, the stock stuff, you know, I am going to address a comment that was made or addressed to me uh, today, which, you know, I normally, I don't think I ever do it. And, you know, I'm going to put a little bit of my personal stuff into it. And if I strike a nerve, oh, well, it is what it is maybe i'm trying to do that maybe maybe it's a good thing if i strike a nerve or upset or agitate somebody um you know we'll have to see on that but i'm gonna do that at the very end if you want to hang around if you want anything personal like me you're gonna hear about it and i'm definitely gonna be probably passionate because uh, it's definitely a subject i'm very passionate about and stuff like that and especially you know if somebody's i don't know trying to accuse me of something but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to address it, which I normally don't do. So I'll, I'll keep it to the very end. So for those on the list, you don't have to worry about it. Now, as far as what's going on in the market, you might have heard, you know, boy, these rating agencies back at it again. You know, I told you about Fitch coming out. They're down. Oh, oh, my God, the debt. Oh, it's risky. Woo wow. I think you're a couple years too late there, brother. But we appreciate you putting it out, you know. And now you got Moody's. I mean, they come out. Boom. I saw this. They cut the ratings of 10 U.S. banks and put more on notice. And it's really the more on notice that are interesting because you see it, some of these down here, you know, State Street, Truist Financial, uh, obviously New York, Mellon and stuff. But understand, you got to understand this about rating agencies, guys. I mean, and again, I agree with what they're saying, but here's the problem. Where have you been? How, how many months ago was it we lost two of the biggest banks already? Three have gone under. You weren't there before it and you weren't even there after it, Right. All of a sudden, what I tell you when Fitch did their rating agency, or rating downgrade, no coincidences. Kind of suspicious. They're doing it right now, right? Hmm. Right? Neither one of them wanted to do it in May, June, July. Why not? Could it, could it have been because the market was roaring up and their, their little downgrade wouldn't have as much effect? Well, understand why I get suspicious with any rating agency, okay? And you may not know this. Now, on this channel, we learn stuff, okay? Rating agencies are paid, okay? for their ratings whether it be by the person they want the rating or maybe somebody else is paying them to put out a rating on something to help them with something and if you don't believe this this is why the 08 crash was so bad i mean look at this right here the lawsuit quotes internal documents from standard and poor's fitch ratings and moody's investor service one text message says a bond package quote could be structured by cows and we would rate it in another document, an employee wrote, we sold our soul to the devil for revenue. But just to remind everybody what this is about, these rating agencies, what they rated, a bunch of junk that a bunch of people bought and led to the market meltdown. That's right. That's why 08 was so bad, right? They were literally getting basically bribed to go out and give AAA ratings for garbage, right? So why all of a sudden, you know, am I suspicious about this? Neither one of these came out months ago. They wait until the market starts softening up getting red to where a downgrade will really have some effect and who benefits the most. And by the way, I don't mind this as far as like helping push the market down for, because I've been saying we've been overextended for weeks and weeks and it gives you great buying opportunities, but it's just when something's suspicious and something smells fishy and I know the biggest beneficiary is the big firms up there because you think they want to be buying Apple up at 200, whatever Microsoft's crazy number was, NVIDIA, whatever. no. No, they want them 10 to 20% down, and then they can get back in at a better price, right? And so, yeah, in a way, they're helping us, but the problem is it's, it's such a jacked-up system, right? They're getting paid to put out ratings, and I'm not saying, I mean, obviously, allegedly, you know, maybe somebody's slipping them some dollars to start downgrading, but do your job. You're supposed to be there before the mess hits, or at least right after. You guys are waiting months, and we got, and don't be, and when I tell you this, we still got one more rating agency that I don't think we've heard from, have we? So one has downgraded banks, right? And one downgraded the U.S. debt. So those other things can get downgraded. So I think the other one, you know, so, so let's see what happens if we start to finally get a bounce off some certain levels, right? And let's see if that rating agency comes out and tries to push us down even farther. It's just so, understand there's one more left. So keep that in mind. Now, what was the other thing coming out of here, right? China, I keep telling you, right? Their economy, you know, some people say it's not as bad as it's supposed to be. But understand, they have a deflationary problem, right? I mean, it was, today it was their ex, imports, exports were just way worse than people thought. But also understand, they're literally lowering prices right now to try to drum up demand, right? Here in America, we don't have that problem, right? They keep raising prices, trying to actually get demand down in a way, right? But demand is still strong. Over there, they're having to lowering it. And there's companies saying they're just holding on by 
a thread, just hoping demand comes back. And you see by this chart right here, right? That's not where you want to be. And that's not where America wants to be in any economy. Okay. And understand this is important because this is the second largest economy in the world. Whatever you think about their government or anything else, the people are normal people. They're good people just trying to work, support their families and stuff. And understand without them, Apple don't go. Tesla don't go, Microsoft don't go. All these big companies that hold up all these stock markets, they don't go because they get a lot of money. A lot of companies get a lot of money from China, okay? So understand that. Now, and, and something else. What else come out today? Foreign direct investment. All of a sudden, not looking so hot, okay? You see it, You can see that chart playing today from 20, 21, 22, and all of a sudden you go, whoop, wait a minute, that's slipping. And, and why, right? Because it has something to do with geopolitical politics or whatever, People not believing, you know, that the government or, or the country is going to be rebounding like it's supposed to. Because remember, we were supposed to be there. So we'd be raising prices and all this crazy mess. And that's just not happening. And guys, before we continue, if you're getting anything out of this, please hit that thumbs up down there. I really appreciate it. And if you like the material here and the videos, think about subscribing. And that leads me into the market. And what you're seeing is what we discussed coming up before we even got to August, right? Your season the seasonality is starting to play out. Look at the VIX, right? VIX has been spiking, Okay. And why is it spiking? It's very simple because, you know, sometimes seasonality plays out, sometimes it don't. But you can see right here, here's a seasonality chart and bam, you know, it's been absolutely roaring up so far. So we'll see if that continues. Nothing's going to be in a straight line for either one of these, right? But if it's roaring up, that means s and coming down. s and sitting on a key level right now in this channel right here. You got that 50 right below it. Keep that in mind. The Q's, you're sitting there. It's actually almost touched this 50 today. So it's sitting right there at that 50. And you do not want to lose the 50 moving average. Okay. Again, it's trying to hold on to 370 the best it can. It got in a gap today and stuff. Uh, filled that gap. So we got rid of that. But again, it's trying to hold on here. So that 370 level, because that breaks, we're going to go past the 50. Okay. And that's not a good thing. Obviously, IWM. It already broke its 21, which I told you about, and I'll bring it up in a minute. But there is a lot of support coming right there at that level I'm pointing to, which is around like 188, I believe. You got the all-time high anchor VWAP right there, which can actually support. The 50s moving up. And obviously, this has been where a lot of people have stepped in and tried to buy and everything. So we'll see if this holds, if we continue to get selling pressure. At some point in time, you got to get a bounce, though. And, and yesterday was kind of a bounce. So we'll see. Again, it's not going to be straight up and down. Like I talked about, is this the best you know, economic environment, small caps, absolutely not. But this move has not been based on that, okay? Now, Palantir, we talked about this yesterday, better hang the moon. They had a double beat, raised forecast, even put a billion-dollar buyback uh, stock program in place. But, of course, it sold off like everything else, right? It comes down, the 50 saved it. It bounced right off the 50, filled that gap right there so I can remove that gap. And so, again, we might get a bounce back tomorrow. We'll have to see if it loses the 50, you know, because it has ran up a boatload. So just keep that in mind, okay? And what's happening? Companies are getting punished. It's like you see with Apple here, Microsoft. If they're not hanging in the moon, and even some with double Bs and everything else, they're still getting punished. You know, that's just where the market's at right now. It's how they're looking at earnings because of these big, big run-ups. And you see Apple setting it broke its 50. It's sitting there right at that 100 moving average, right on that volume nose, down over 10%. So, you know, had a little green today. So just keep in mind, you know, has they, the market had enough of their flesh or do they want more? Okay. Microsoft down over 10%, broke through its 50. Again, it's approaching 100 down there where that gap is going to be. It's in this volume gap right here. So this one looks to me a little weaker than Apple. We'll see, you know, how much flesh the market wants to take from it. Okay. Before it gets back in there. Remember, these make up a huge amount of these indexes and all these ETFs. AMD, who's been going strong last few days, you know, end up having a nice sell-off right here, about 3.5% for the day. Sitting there on the hourly, the MACD looks like it wants to try to curl back up. But again, it's sitting in this area where, you know, a lot of buyers come in. Again, I want to see if we can get down to that ascending trend line at the bottom there around 107 uh, to see if we get that bounds or if that breaks or not. So again, semiconductors are all over the place right now. They're probably one of the strongest out there. And a lot of people are just waiting to see if there's going to be any weakness. And I think you're not going to see that until NVIDIA actually reports. And then you got BABA again. This it ain't anything to do with BABA. This move has never been about fundamentals. I've been saying it for weeks and weeks. This is about the Chinese trying to do stimulus, right? So if they come out tomorrow and they say, hey, stimulus is going to work. We're going to pile whatever in here. The stock's going to pop. If we keep getting terrible economic news out, it's going to weigh on all these Chinese stocks. And that's what's happening is in this volume gap right here. So we'll see if we get some more selling off going down to around 92 or not. We'll have to see, you know, every time I, what I say, like, what is a month ago? I said, here we go again with Baba. And everybody always, you know, goes, here we go. We're going to 120. 
And then we get the bad economic news again coming out of China. So no surprise there. Now, you know, when you look at earnings tomorrow, not going to be so bad. Obviously, nothing to move the markets. Uh, some I'm interested in, Roblox, Wendy's. I'm really interested in Walt Disney because it can't catch a bid and it's sitting at a major support area, which it has to hold, or it might just continue to go down. A lot of this has to do with politics and things they've been putting in their movies, stuff like that. And that leads me to what I talked about earlier, you know, which was a comment. I was getting in the car from the water park today, coming home with my son. And I, I was looking at my phone. I read this comment and stuff. And so I'm like, oh, okay. And, you know, I'm going to read the comment, but it's obviously, you know, this person doesn't know me or anything. And, I, and I'm not trying to attack this person. I never, I never do that. I believe in respecting people, treating people how they want to be treated, all that good stuff. I don't put judgment on anybody, nothing else. Okay. Normally, I don't even address these things, as you know. And I sure don't really sell, share a lot of like personal uh, life stuff. But I said, you know, I'm going to do that. And, and I might touch a nerve. I've definitely touched a nerve when I said fast food workers who flipping burgers shouldn't be getting paid 15 and $20 an hour unless they live in California, New York, Miami, D.C., some really expensive area. Right. And I've had a few people come back at me, send me emails. And that's fine. You know, all that good stuff. I've, I've done it. And I'm going to get into that in just a minute. But here, here's the comment. And it says, thanks for your content. It's interesting. I enjoy it. I'm trying to talk my partners into inviting you to one of our fast food restaurants to flip burgers coming Labor Day weekend to show us how easy it is at 15 bucks an hour and how 15 bucks an hour is outrageous for such an easy gig. I heard you have experience from working in our field back in the days, in your teen years, I guess in the late 80s, early 90s. Would love to hear your story about how easy it is back then. For some reason, we remember it very differently. Maybe it was a location you worked at. Anyway, I'll let you know if corporate agrees to invite you for a three-day Labor Day weekend. We have bets ready. You wouldn't last a morning shift. Cheers, man. And I thought to myself, how am I going to address this, right? And because... Obviously, you probably, if you watch the channel a long time, I don't share a lot of personal stuff about myself because, you know what, I like the spotlight on me because, you know, I'm just a regular, everyday American. I mean, there's nothing, you know, I don't, I'm not braggadocious in any way, shape, or form, anything I've ever accomplished. You would, I could have won the Nobel Peace Prize, and you would never know it. I'm like my grandpa when it comes to that, right? He was highly decorated, as I mentioned the other day, never talked about it. That, that's just how we are. Okay? That's how I am, okay? And so, you know, but when I look at it, I'm like, you know what? I'll say this, and it might strike a nerve in some people. I'm hoping it strikes a nerve in somebody. I hope somebody watches this. And, you know, look, if you're born in a middle class family or even better off, you know, there is many things that, that you got in your favor. But as my grandpa used to tell me, and he actually told me this later on when I got to be an adult, he said, I don't know how in the world you didn't end up dead or in jail, because that's where most of my relatives and friends went from where I'm from. And when you're living at the poverty level, you get a whole lot is a lot riskier okay and, and the, the odds are stacked so far against you to ever get out and really be anybody that's just the way it is or do anything or make it to a middle class neighborhood and, and all that good stuff it really is right and so i'm telling but here's the deal you can do it you know i always say i have a regular iq regular memory if i can do it you can do it but it's gonna take sacrifice so i don't have to go down and spend three days at a restaurant labor day because i've done it i did it as a kid or a teenager that is and I also did it as an adult, okay, as a restaurant manager, all right? So, you know, I've done that, but here's the difference. If you, and this is the thing, my, I grew up with a mom, and, and I've said all this to her face, so it's not going to be nothing new, you know, that she was one of those people. She would complain 24-7 about being underpaid and all this other stuff. Never had more than a minimum wage job, by the way, you know, and all this stuff, and that's fine. Now, I make no judgments on anybody for what you do. All this is legal, trust me. I, I, I've probably done the job you're doing. And I respect anybody that goes out there and works hard every day, as long as it's an honest job. As long as you ain't out there doing drugs, doing like crap, robbing people, doing anything crazy, got nothing but respect for you. So I'm making no judgments on anybody when I say this stuff. Okay. All I'm saying is if you want to get out and make more money, right, and live a different life, you got to be willing to sacrifice because when you grow up at the poverty level, America is stacked against you. They are not going to hand you anything. There's a myth about that. It's not going to happen. Okay. You got to be willing to sacrifice. So if you're sitting in that restaurant like I was, you say to yourself, and the guy's bossing you around, you're flipping burgers. You say, hey, man, how do I get your job? You might have to go get a degree. That's what you might have to do. You might have to work full time and go to school full time. I did it. You can do it. Okay. When I got them, why, why did I go to the military? There was no other way out. There was no other way out where I was at. Okay, I was never going to see college. I was never going to escape. I was going to go work at a lead plant and die of cancer 20 years later like everybody else does. That's basically what went on in my town. 
I didn't want that. So I was willing to sacrifice. Got suckered in the grunts. Don't go in the grunts, but there are plenty of jobs you can go get in there to get you a skill. Okay. Nowadays, I, I talk to young people about that stuff, and you would think, I say, hey, go join the military if you can't afford Kyle and you can't get out of here. You would think I'm going and pushing them off a freaking thousand foot cliff into concrete or something. I mean, it's amazing. Like, oh, I ain't doing that. You know, it's like, really? Like, you're complaining about your life, but you don't want to make sacrifices? And that's the difference, right? When I got done with college, what I do? I, I drove to Atlanta, didn't know anybody, slept on a floor in a, in a, a roach freaking infested apartment because they gave you the first three months free. Right, should have known that one, but that's okay. It was cheap, right? I didn't have that much money. Didn't have a job. Didn't know anybody, right? So what I do? Oh, look, Wendy's is hiring for managers. You know what? Beggars can't be choosers. I'll do it. Went in there. Nothing's too good for me. I'm not too good to any job. Whereas digging ditches, whatever, right? Because I know it's a start, right? Because I have a notebook that has goals and everything in it. Boom, boom. Got through the military. Got promoted to sergeant. All this stuff. Marine the quarter four different times. Yay! Went to college. You know, graduated three point five. And by the way, when I went to college. I'm working in, you think fast food is hard? I worked at a steel mill from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning, okay? Then went to school from 8 to 2. You do the math on that, trying to do homework projects and everything else and trying to sleep. I got like three to four hours of sleep a day in the daytime, by the way, not at nighttime, and then have to go back and repeat and go to the steel mill. And if anybody's ever working in a steel mill, they'll tell you, especially in loading those trucks, it is dangerous work and it is hard work. Okay, there's a reason why most of those people are missing their fingers and their toes. There's a reason. I watched a guy get all his fingers ground off with a grinding wheel. Okay, I watched another guy get it impinged and he lost his finger too. I mean, it's dangerous. Okay, that's just the way it is. And so, but that's what I did because I had to sacrifice, right? But I had to get the good GPA. So I sacrificed going to parties, doing all this other stuff, joining fraternities, all that mess. And so I can get through and graduated early, okay? Graduated early to get out of there. So I was still young. Got out there, went to work at Wendy's. So you know what? This is fine. Okay, pay. But I want to do better. What do you do? Look at the guy. And this is what the Marine Corps teaches, what the military will teach, especially in the infantry. You don't join the infantry, but still, you learn the guy ahead of you's job because they might go down and you're going to have to step in that role, okay? You learn time management. You learn how to work hard if you already don't know how, Okay. So that's the stuff you can take into life. If you want to go in the military, go do that. But that's what I was willing to do because you had to do it. Went to go work for another restaurant because, hey, they paid better. And one of my employees really liked me. And he worked at that restaurant too. And he said, I think you'd be great there. Went there. What I have to do? Got promoted three times in one year. Went from assistant manager to general manager in less than a year. Okay. Was it easy? Good God, no. It was not easy. Okay. Took some luck too. But one of my GMs leaving and all this other stuff. But I worked my butt off to make that happen, okay, to get to be a GM. So I was able to increase my income from here up to here, right, in a very short amount of time because I was willing to make the sacrifice. What else to do? Went back to school in my 30s to get my MBA, right, because you want to increase your income even more. You, the story is, it's not talking about me, but you have to be willing to sacrifice. If you are not willing to sacrifice, quit griping, quit complaining, Keep it to yourself, okay? That's just the way, because you only have yourself to blame. That's just the way it is. And I understand, trust me, we're all dealt some tough, hard cards. I get it, okay? But if you think you're too good to do something, or you just don't got the work ethic and the will to go out and push to actually achieve, you know, then whose fault is that? I mean, prime example, 2020 comes along. I'm working my butt off, right? I've been taught to be a company man. No more, by the way. Here's why. 2020, what happened? We shut down the world right? I get laid off. I don't even get, here's what really made me mad about the whole thing. I, I didn't realize I never been laid off. Companies no longer lay off by how good a worker you are. They lay off by your hire date. And so people that are work way, you know, way worse workers than you, like nowhere near at your level as far as work ethic and everything else, they get to stay and you got to go, right? So I'm like, really? So I came home that night, couldn't sleep, got up at three in the morning. I found this notebook. I wrote this. And this is what I'm talking about. You got to do this, especially if you're young. Please listen to this. See where, I don't know if you can make that out. See where it says goals right there? And I'll show you. Let's put it right here. Net, very top one. Never be a victim of the system again. Create a YouTube channel and monetize it through ads and affiliate links. You know, but it's like one of those things where I'm, I'm lit up at three in the morning trying to figure out a way. Because I don't know if we're going, when we're going back to work, the world shut down. I need to bring in money for the family. And plus, I just don't like being useless and sitting around doing nothing, right? What to do? Researching like crazy, right? Purchase a camera and microphone. Learn to edit an iMovie. 
and never did any of this stuff ever. I didn't even own a camera at this moment, right? Create a Facebook account, create the YouTube account. Do, and it's all this, all this, the page is full. That's the kind of stuff you got to do. It's that simple. It's not rocket science. Again, regular IQ, regular memory. Nothing special about me. Okay, nothing special about me. The only thing you won't do with me, you'll never outwork me. Even in the age I'm in right now, you will never, ever outwork me. That's just the way it is. Okay, you got to You got to find it. You got to dig deep. I want you to succeed. I want you to do it. But if you don't want to, that's fine too. Right? That's fine. I'm not putting anybody down that flips burgers, dig ditches, whatever. We got to have everybody. Okay, we got to have people that want to go out in the fields and pick all the berries and everything else. Got to have it. It's tough, backbreaking labor. And just because I'm telling you, 15 to 20 an hour in the South to flip a burger. I'm not saying your job's easy. I'm just saying, nah, sorry, because don't remember, what did fast food jobs used to be? At least back in my day and my mom's day too. Teenagers and college kids. The only real adults were the managers. All of a sudden, I guess it says a lot about our economy, when all of a sudden 21st century hits, I guess that's when it happened, and adults are taking kids' jobs and actually trying to support their children, right? Now, on these wages now. It's like, what the heck happened? That's a whole different subject, by the way. But if you want to break the chains, if you if you start off in poverty and you want to break the chains, you got to sacrifice and look around. You got way more advantages than I had. You got the internet now. I learned to type on a typewriter. We didn't have the internet when I was in high school. Okay, you, you got online degrees, all kinds of stuff. But it's not going to be easy. Don't let anybody fool you. It's not going to be easy. But I promise you, if you do it, when you look back, man, twenty years later, you're gonna say, "Oh, I'm so glad I did that." I'm telling you, I go back home to visit, man, oh, man, I run these guys, man, they're struggling, struggling. And if you want to do that, that's fine, but they didn't have to do it. All they had to do was stop, stop partying so much, stop doing this and start doing this over here. That's all they had to do. I'm telling you, it's not going to happen for everybody. I get it, right? I, everybody gets breaks. I had a few breaks. Everybody's going to get some breaks. You do need some breaks. Don't Don't let that, you know. Don't let me not say that, okay? But I'm rooting for you. You can you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm telling you right now, it can happen, okay? So please, take this message in a positive way. And so and if the person, I'm actually going to text them or respond to this message right now. I'm actually going to be on a vacation on Labor Day uh, up in, where are we going? I think South Carolina or something. But anyway, that, that week is already, I appreciate it, by the way. But I have no urge to go back in a steel mill anymore. No urge to go back in a fast food joint. And it has nothing to do with not respecting what you do. It has nothing to do with that. Okay, so just understand that right now. So anyway, hope you got something out of it, guys. Hit the like and subscribe button if you did. Give me your feedback. Feel free to share your story. Because, you know, if we can inspire anybody, that's the whole point. Let's do it, right? Uh, you know, let's uplift the boats here okay whatever however the saying goes please all right because god knows we need it so have a good one guys appreciate it